Hey everyone, it's your favorite podcast, it's time to rip the rack. I'm Brian, and I'm here with Tim, and we're in Tim's Big Cat Animal Sanctuary again, out here on his big deck. Well, moderately moderately sized deck. It is. Yeah. It's, it's perfectly straight though, it's not crooked at all. No, no, it's a straight deck. Straight deck. You're going to have to bear with us this week, folks. We are outside, I'm in between, my dad's watching Colin right now, so I can do this while Kelly's working. And it's Monday night, and we go live on Tuesday morning, and poor, poor Tim's over here eating painkillers because he's got a kidney stone. <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh. I'm, but... And he's laughing. I'm hoping to pass it during the podcast. <laughs> hey, could you cover that up, please? COVID. I did. I did. I'm, I'm hoping to... I'm, oof. Man, that ox is kicking in. Um, I'm hoping to I'm hoping to pass this during the uh, podcast so you can... Oh, I'm bringing the mic. Oh, yeah, bring the mic in. You can, you know, ask me questions as I'm... Going. Well, I, 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 I do want to ask you something. No, like, go ahead. Feel free. You have, like, how many kidney stones since I've known you? This is number four. Okay, so I exaggerated, but still, <laughs> you have four kidney stones. You just had one, like, two months ago. I did. I did. That was number three. You need to stop drinking soda. I have. I did months ago. Then, too much milk? I, I, I don't drink. Know. I I don't drink milk. You know that. Oh, that's right. <laughs> you drink milk, you shit your pants. <laughs> I poop a lot. Um, uh, we got a jam-packed show God, for you today. jam-packed. I'm going to do a sponsorship real quick. Um, I have yet to go to this place, but it's new, and I am a toy nut in anything vintage. So uh, this week's going to be sponsored by Main Vintage Toys. It's a new shop that's opened at 650 Main Street in South Portland, Maine, just down the road from the Holy Donuts. Um, and the number is 207-805-1935. Um, they're new. He's getting new stock every day. They're on Facebook as well, Main Vintage Toys. Um, if you're into stuff from when you were a kid, like old Ninja Turtles figures, G.I. Joe's, bunch of wrestling stuff Teenage there. Ninja Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Ninja Turtles. He has a Technodrome, actually, an actual big Technodrome playset from that. Wow. So, um, support him i'm a collector of vintage toys and video games and maybe someday i'll take some pictures in my man cave which is our studio sometimes and show you guys my collection but main vintage toys um 207-805-1935 and also on facebook main vintage toys they're our sponsor this week Tim, uh, all right why did you bowl with a kidney stone this past weekend because i said i'd bowl you still have it at 123 or 125 uh, one, some somewhere in that 125 range with I, the kidney stones. I was very consistent. Um, my low for the my low for the tournament was a one fourteen. My high was a one thirty eight. And, and as we're talking, this is the this year was the national mixed doubles. Usually the international. The tenth annual international mixed doubles in at one seven ten in Augusta, Maine. Yep. Um, and congratulations to Craig Holbrook and his partner for winning it. Faye Sawyer. Faye Sawyer. Uh, they um, they bowled great. They. Uh, they they won some very close matches in the uh, in the playoffs. Um, That's Craig up being Craig up. You know the the first match um, they bowled Cole Fry and Mario, and uh, down ten with a box to go and. Man, Cole bowled with Mario. Yeah. I bet Cole learned some things this week. But you know, <laughs> he might have learned a few words. A few new words and, and a whole new appreciation for boobs. Oh yeah, a whole new appreciation for <laughs> boobs. Um. I love you, Mario. Bye they uh, so Craig had a Craig was sitting on a spare in this in the ninth, down ten, throws a hammer, and then I forget what he put on it, um, enough to win, obviously. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then in the final uh, final string, it was uh, uh, him and Faye against Josh Daly and Sage Johnson. Sage Johnson, and it was Sage's first adult tournament, which I think he just turned eighteen. Not too bad. Oh, a while ago. Um, and Wasn't she uh, um, Cole's partner one year on Candleton for Kate? Yes. Yeah, Mario's daughter. Yeah, when he threw the, yep. uh, the one sixty something. Yeah, he had a triple, I think. Yeah. Like you should ask. You should ask Cole who his favorite bowler was back then. Mm-hmm. Um. <laughs> so yeah, they uh, uh, came down to the last ball actually in that one. Uh, Daly had horsemen left, right? Uh, Daly had the one two seven ten. And needed three out of the four, and he took out the one, two, and left the seven and the ten. So, that's a tough shot for a lefty because that ball's not going down the line. 
he almost would have been better off playing the head pin and hoping the ball took the 10. Well, he should have played the head pin. It's the one. Right. I, I understand that, <laughs> but I'm saying for you or I. You're, you're talking playing, about playing it outside. Yeah. For you and I, we play that inside because we can bury the two pin down into the seven. Yeah, but I'd, I'd have done the same thing on the one, the one three ten. I'd play it inside with my ball coming in right to left. I don't know. I find my, with my ball, I make it more times than not outside. Well, there's a difference between you and I. Well, you're really good. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that. I used to could. You used to could. And I, and I could again here, hopefully soon. You could. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was it was a great tournament. We had a lot of fun. It looked like a lot um, of fun when I came up to pick that up and you know they. That off. I I think I'm an unsung MVP. I mean, I I made four trips. Or two trips back and forth to Augusta to make sure Dad could bowl. Wow. Look at you. I mean, that doesn't begin to make up for the stuff he did for me all those years. But. No, no. <laughs> no. So that was, no, it was it was a lot of fun. Mike and Leanne did a great job running that, per usual. Yeah, I, I hope um, you go on it next year. Anybody listening? If they any female wants to bowl with me, you probably don't, but I, I'm looking for a partner. <laughs> Is that a shameless plug? Yes, it might be. For a partner? I'm a really nice dude, and I'm okay at bowling sometimes. Sometimes I'm really good. Sometimes. Sometimes. Um, when I bowl Tim, I'm usually that good. Well, let's not go crazy. I've never laid an egg against you. You have to admit that. I've never laid an egg in a match against you. So I have a quick question. Mm-hmm. Why are we doing this outside? I'm freezing. Well, when we decided to do this an hour ago, it was bright and sunny out. Hey, Jesus. Oh, Tim's in his old man <sighs> mood. Guys, it's it's 65 with a breeze and Tim's shivering. It's cold. Ma, meatloaf. Oh, man. Sorry. Um, oh, man. Mm, I'm looking my heart now. <laughs> I'm a laugh like you um, were. But, no, that, that, that international mixed doubles is a really cool compliment to the Canada. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, can, you could bowl with a Canadian if yep. you wanted to. Yep. Well, there you go. Maybe you could get a Canadian to bowl with you next year. I, I'm way better liked in Canada than I think. Than if, if, <laughs> if the board is open. Oh, no, we're dirty, dirty Americans. We're, we're you, never getting back in Canada. Of course we are. This is over on November 4th. Yeah, you keep saying that. Everything's over November 4th. <laughs> Hopefully the world's not. No, nah, everything. November 4th. Yeah. November 3rd at midnight. Does uh, Mike have any of the stats from the weekend? Oh. Sorry. Oh, Tim's trying to move and the kidney uh, stone's biting him. Mother. Um, yeah, I mean, there, there, there are some stats, um, <laughs> oh, the numbers on page, <laughs> some numbers on page, Jeez, um, oxy treat me, kid. oh my God, it's, it doesn't, it's not actually doing a damn thing. Um, you got a dud take two more. If, if, <laughs> man, if we had done this like two hours ago, I was perfect. Like I felt great. I was like, oh my God, like I pass it. Woohoo. It was much rejoicing in the kingdom. And then it's, oh man, it's like getting hit in the friggin' kidney with a sledgehammer. I'm sorry, dude. Son of a rotten. Um, what do you want for stats? Who had high average? I have no idea. Um, Why don't you tell us the things you do know, Tim? Nate Nate Lee's beat me by four pins. I can see that. Um, he was 1746 and I was seven. Oh wait, I can't. 17, yeah, I was, he was 1746, I was 1744. Nate's right around 125, too, right? Somewhere in that range. He good. No, he threw a good, he threw a good ball. Um, I want to say Chris Merrill was 1833. Yeah, he likes it, he likes that place. That's a high three in the house, by the way, I do believe. Yes, yes. Did that in a, in a once a month league, which yeah. by the way, the once a month league 480 is some, 480 something, I believe. Yeah, the once a month in Maine is going again this year. But I will say, I will say, Evan did not beat me even with his 182 string. Just wanted to put that out there that Evan was below me. Yeah, well, he should have thrown a 140 something instead of a 39 or whatever he threw against me. Uh, let's see, what else do we got? Well, Tim's looking, I will continue. Um, Thank you. The main once a month um, league is happening. I think they're still taking sign up, so contact uh, Kim Smith or Mark Smith for that information on Facebook. Um, I bowled in the last two years. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I'm not bowling in it this year. 
um, taking a year off from that, and I think I'm going to bowl in the main opens this year. I can't afford both. You know, but yeah. Man, when people say you can't have nice things when you have kids, they're right. I mean, I wouldn't change it for the world, but the I, kid, the kids have nice things. He has a, yeah. Dang, kids are expensive. Yep. Uh, Do they ever get cheaper, Tim? No. No, it gets more expensive, actually. Because the toys go from plastic cars to PlayStations? Yes, and then from PlayStations to real cars, and then... Well, Kelly's already told me. She goes, you realize because he gets a new game console, you, you don't have to buy one, too. And I'm like, well, no, then I get it, and he waits. Right. No, you get it, and he gets the old one. Exactly. Well, no, he, that goes on the shelf in the, in the he, collection. He'll, he'll never know. He'll never know the difference. If that little boy could go down the stairs and see all the toys in that basement right now. Um, Evan had the big string. He had the high string of 182. Uh, Chris was the high at 1830, I guess, mm -hmm. whatever that was. Uh, Fresh or 14, correct? Yes. Uh, Freshu was 1703. Craig Holbrook was 1718. Uh, that was not the year Craig was born, no. by the way. That was the year he threw his first two, uh, 400 triple. Uh, uh, <laughs> 400 triple. But we did have the discussion with Craig on it makes absolutely zero sense that he does not have a 200 string. Yeah. Craig, Craig listens. I was happy to hear that. He does. Yeah, we have a confirmed listener. Two, well, we got two confirmed listeners. Oh, that's nice. Calvin. Calvin, Calvin listens. listens. And uh, Ivan's, cousin, Ivan's cousin Ryan. <laughs> Ivan Drago's cousin Ryan. Yeah. Um, with speaking of Ryan, he did have a question. Uh, question time. Uh, question, question time. Um <laughs> can't do that we just got a letter song from blues clues like it's not an actual letter so that we need to figure out a, a question do, do that we got a letter song we just got a letter we just got a letter we just got a letter wonder who it's from wow <laughs> i got i got kids show themes on lock for days wow. man days so mickey mouse is a banger son <laughs> Ryan Drago would like to know, um, He, I think he was either, um, I think we either gave misinformation or he misconstrued. We don't, we're never wrong. I'm not saying we're wrong. I'm saying he might have misconstrued, might have misunderstood. Oh, okay. Um, the Pep the, the $10,000 the $10, Pepsi challenge was not a TV show. Um, I think they did record like a final. It was actually just a, it was a tournament, weekend right. tournament. Yeah. It was a 10-string tournament, I believe, and I think what I saw was um, they had taken four of the, the four top qualifiers, I believe, for like the or the four top seeds, I guess. I don't know how they did it, but they picked four guys and they had just filmed them right. bowling. Right. Um, Chip Carson had a 12-match winning streak. That was on the old Channel 51 show, um, which was out of vacation land. Channel 51 being one of the – or, no, or it was either 51 or PBS. Um, um, I know the one seven ten show Candleton Action used to be on Adelphia Channel Nine. Yep. Um, and that was what Chips on, and that uh, I do not believe there are any old tapes of that bowling show no. anywhere. No. Um, I Charlie believe. Might have them. Nope. No. Nope. And Chips looked into it, and the TV station doesn't have them, and. Because the old Channel 51 was the old Fox. Mm -hmm. uh, I hate to ask this, but is Jackie still around or did Jackie pass away? That used to own 1710. I assume she's still around? Because maybe she has some of the old tapes that we can put on YouTube or something. I know I know Woody passed. Yeah. Um, I believe Jackie is, is still yeah. around. And Dave Ostertag used to bowl with Jackie in the league after she got bowl. Owned in the bowling alley. Really? Yeah, she used to oh, do the mornings with Dave. I didn't know that. Um, so, uh, Ryan, unfortunately, um, the answer to your question was uh, no. I was wondering if anyone you know or if any of the viewers have or know anybody who might have old tapes of the bowling show would want to share those videos on YouTube. Uh, also, when and how long was that show on air? Um, it was on from the time it started until it got done. They're like they're like you know Yogi Bearism, except with Tim is like you, you get a spare and you, you're looking it over and he'll go, well that'll go if you make it. That, that's what, true, Tim. 
I said that this weekend. I like it the first time, like, someone hears it, they just kind of stand there for a minute, like, well, you're right. <laughs> That's why I do it. We don't we don't ask him for uh, options often, because one year we did in the Worlds, and the first four times that we, we got a response from him, everyone threw it in the gutter. And, but that's not my fault that you <laughs> threw it. I didn't tell you to throw it in the gutter. No, it wasn't just me. I, I think, like, three, three other people did, too. Sometimes I just tell you to press the button, because the mm-hmm. sweep takes it all the time. True. So, we got a top five. Bowlers. Ever. Well, in, in the last 30 years. In the history of Evers. Uh, <laughs> man, it's fun. It's fun. Monday, Monday, Monday. Uh, so, yes, we do have our top five. Um, so, I, I need to point out one thing. And I think I know what you're going to nope. point out. You don't know what I'm going to okay. point out. Don't don't sit there and tell me you know what I'm going to point out. Okay. When you don't know what I'm going to point out. Okay. Ow, mother. Sorry. That's the Clippers that was talking <laughs> for me. Oh my god. What were you doing? <sighs> <laughs> oh god, I hope you get one of these someday. <laughs> Just so I can go. Oh, who's a tough guy? Oh, <laughs> who's a little man down on the ground? Oh, I didn't even come up. Um. So. There are, obviously, when you do a top 25 list from the past 30 years. Is that the cat going nuts? Yes, because there's chickadees. It's bird feeders. Oh. We have we have two of the cats out today, out, out with us. Mookie and Luna. Yep. They're our mascots for the Thing the Rack podcast. They're the podcast cat. No, no. They're the podcast pussies, if you will. Y- yes. Yes. Um, so, as I was saying, before I was rudely interrupted by these two hooligan shenanigan type kitties um when you do a top 25 list you can only have 25 (laughs) and you're talking 30 years worth of bowling Mm -hmm. however i am gonna go on record as saying i forgot about one particular person well probably forgot more Mm -hmm. but one particular person that i actually feel like a damn fool that I didn't have in my list. Okay. Okay. Uh, Bobby Witt. Yep. Yep, I missed Bobby Witt too. So, Bobby should be on this list. Yeah. Um, Multiple time Kings, yep. champion in the world. I don't know if he's ever won the knockout, but he's got Pro Series titles. <laughs> oh, he's got Pro he's Series. He's a great doubles bowler. Yeah. He's like a really good tag team wrestler. He's a great doubles and teams bowler. And he's a super nice guy. And I and I and, uh, and an accomplished fantasy baseball player. Yes, he plays like thirteen leagues. <laughs> yeah, he plays a lot. Um, one of those leagues is like it's a grand to get into it, isn't it? Yeah, it's big money. It's my it's money. So that was brought to my attention this weekend, mm-hmm. and I had no good answer. Um, oh, I, I got called out by uh, Jeff Walsh doing our other podcast last night because we. I had Holbrook at nine, and you had him, I think. I haven't even given it yet. Oh, okay. Well, he, he had he called me out for having Holbrook at nine. Where does he think he should have gone? He, the one. He goes, he has multiple reasons why Craig Holbrook should be one. Okay. Well, that's fine. Jeff, Jeff Walsh can have that opinion. Mm-hmm. Or, and when, or, or as he's known as on our other podcast, my other podcast, he's the Sunday Night Food guy. Well, he can be something. Yeah. Um. No, Walsh is a good dude. No, I know he's he is. To his opinion. Absolutely. He's wrong, but he's entitled to his opinion. <laughs> um, so, Bobby, um, I know you listen to the podcast. The next time I see you, um, we'll, have a, we'll have a a Laurel and Hardy handshake. Uh, no, seriously, uh, Bobby should have been on here. I completely 100% overlooked him. Um, I should say overlooked him. I just, when I was writing people down, just and that's the hard part about this because well, Bobby's just consistent. Just, oh no, he just absolutely. Bowls and bowls and bowls. Like he's not loud. He's not. No, I mean he he moves around for a big dude. Oh, for a big. Oh yeah, but he's he's. It's I don't know. Smooth ball. I don't know. So Bobby, you you definitely should be on this list. Mm-hmm. Um, I will put you at at number twenty six just for the sake of putting and, you on this and we'll list. Put an asterisk. 
um, because you would be higher than that in my book. Mm-hmm. I just simply didn't go, didn't, didn't get there. Mm-hmm. So review. So last week we did. Well, we'll we'll, we'll we'll go we'll we'll go back to the twenty five. Oh, all twenty five. Yep. Um, I'll go. I'll I'll read my twenty five. Well, your twenty. My twenty. Mm-hmm. My twenty five to six. Twenty five or six to four. <laughs> Oh my god! Son of a sweet baby lord Jesus! I should make him laugh because it makes it worse. Oh mother <laughs> I I guess I'll go first. <laughs> um so at twenty five I had Mike Poolin, twenty four Steve Plant, twenty three Mark Carrier, twenty two Kristen Brady, twenty one Kansas Snow. 20, Dick O'Connell, 19, Brian Bernaches, 18, <sighs> Alvin Locke, 17, Corey Smith, 16, Mark Gregory, 15, Brian Fuller Jr., 14, Chris Bovair, 13, Dave Godwin, 12, Chris Hollett, 11, John Winchell, I feel like I'm doing 12 Days of Christmas, 10, Sean Baker, 9, Craig Holbrook, 8, Chip Carson, 7, Sean Morrison, and 6, Nate LeBlanc. I gotta stand up. Oh. I can't sit. Oh my god. Well, you're gonna pull your headphones out. <laughs> now you're tethered. I'm tethered. Oh, sweet mother. We, we may not finish this. No, no, we're finishing. When I start something, damn it, I finish it. <laughs> Even if it's by yourself? Right, wrong, or indifferent. <laughs> damn right. <laughs> um, so my, I, at 25, I had Russ Neely. 24, Mark Gregory. 23, Tony LeBlanc. 22, Calvin Locke. 21, Corey Smith. 20, Dave Godwin. 19, Chris Bovair. 18, John Winchell, 17, Deck Klein, 16, Dick O'Connell, 15, Jeff Atkins, 14, Sean Morrison, 10, uh, 13, Tim Matero, 12, Chip Carson, 11, Sean Baker, 10, Nate LeBlanc, 9, Gary Carrington, 8, Mike Morgan, 7, Chris Hollis, uh, 6 was number, 6 was number. <laughs> Jesus, this is, I can't wait to listen to this. The words are tough. Man, uh, number 6 was Peter Flynn. Okay. Uh, and Bobby Witt would be somewhere in my book. Um, now that I have this, I don't. I don't have him. I, to put him I don't have him there. I would definitely have him in the uh, twelve to eighteen range, somewhere in that. Maybe that was me feeling bad. In, in that vicinity. Um, I'd have him around fifteen to eighteen, somewhere in there. No, you just said Todd. You just. That's me feeling bad, him, I, and I don't want him to be mean to me because he he can't be mean to anybody. I bet he can. I he bet he. Be able to. I bet he can be mean to me. I bet he beats me the next time he bowls. Oh, probably. Yeah. Well, he might have done that anyways. Maybe. <laughs> so. Uh, Who's your five, Tim? I don't know because it's your turn to go first. Oh, I went first last week. No. no you... All right. Let's get this out of the way. Number five <laughs> on Brian's list. Tim, fucking Matero. Yes, Tim is my number five bowler. In. My eyes. I think you're smoking crack, but hey, I appreciate it. Tim averaged 130 a lot more times in the world than he thinks he does. Honestly, not because he's just standing in front of me. He's one of the best anchor bowlers I've ever seen in my life. There is very few other people I would want throwing a ball with a match on the line. And I would bowl with him anytime he asked me to. And feel pretty good that he asked me to bowl. Thank you, bud. And, I mean, numerous state records, 200 strings, chasing the dragon on that eliminations title. Oh, um, <laughs> if he gets on the kidney stone, he might not make it. But Tim is my number five. Well, thank you. You're welcome. I should have been number four. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, my number five was uh, Paul Berger. Mm. Um, Mr. 500. Mr. 500 on TV. On TV. Um, I had the pleasure of watching Paul Bowl. Uh, when I first started back in the early 90s. And uh, he got done, you know, in the late 90s. So he's not a long bowler in the 90s. Um, but he had enough titles and enough Quality significance <laughs> that I he needed to be up. You know, and I, and I kind of flip-flopped him with Peter Flynn. Um, kind of had him going back and forth. So uh, my number five is Paul Berger. Mm, that's a cool... His whole 500 series from TV is on YouTube, so if you haven't seen it, check it out. Oh, it's really cool. It is. It looks like he almost doesn't realize it till the very end, and he's like, oh, oh, it's a 500. <laughs> uh, number four, there's another podcast about bowling that um, they call him the franchise, 
or the dynasty, I think is what he was referred to as, and that's Jeff Surratt. Uh, Jeff e- egged out Tim on the fact that Jeff has a couple Easter titles. Well, I never bowled the Easter title. Well, you need to win one, then you'd be higher. You would have beat Jeff. Well, no, Jeff, Jeff is a machine. Mm-hmm. Um, he is deadly accurate, and he throws marks when he needs to. Um, he's a good teammate from what I've seen. I've never gotten to bowl with Jeff, but it seems like he's usually there in the match and knows what's going on, mostly because he's usually bowling last. Um, but Pro Series, titles, you know, TV, ICB, TV, TVs, oh yeah. TVs, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I, um, I, Jeff needs no explanation, but he's in the top five and he's number four. Yep, he's in my top five, um, but he's not my number four. Mm, who's your number four? Uh, my number four is a uh, gentleman left-handed bowler out of Massachusetts mm-hmm. by the name of Craig Holper. Ah, there he is. Yep. Um, I, I struggled putting Craig at four. Matter of fact, I, honestly, the easiest one I had was number one for me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, other than that, I could probably argue my number two through six or seven in any order. Um, With a list of his quality, I yep. think you can. So I have Craig at number four. Um, he's he's done everything there is in the game. Um, Except the 200. <laughs> sorry, I wasn't going to bring that up. And that's why he's not higher, because he's not good enough to throw a 200 oh, string. <laughs> it. it... I mean, it is the thing in Candleton Bowling that boggles your mind. He does, yes. He does have three 500s in three different states. Um, no hey, provinces? hey, Chipmunk. Um, I didn't ask, oh. but he does have three in three different states. He has um, numerous team titles. Numerous team titles. He's got two singles, uh, world singles titles. I, I drew lanes with him the year in Bangor he won it. Yep. In 2000. Er, no, fourteen, I think. Yeah, fourteen. And he's a hell of a nice guy. Yeah. He, I, I, I could sit and talk to Craig for uh, for he a long time. The game and yep. loves the game. So, had my partner in crime in this podcast remembered a microphone? And you could have interviewed. Craig. We we were going to interview Craig, but someone might have forgot the microphone on the four different trips that he yeah, made I know. I know. that he made up. Sorry. Um. So I did, Craig. Craig. <laughs> Craig did from man. This is gonna be a good one. Yep. No um, editing, folks. No edit. Oh no. Why would I edit? Um. Sorry. Got a little. Yep. A little twinge. A little twinge. Um. So number four, Craig Holbrook. Um. My number three is a left-hander out of Mass as well. Peter Flynn. I have Peter at three. Um. Peter is one of two guys I know when you're in the world to average one forty for the week and. It wasn't like he bowled the minimum amount of strings to average 140 and win. No, he, he bowled, bowled every string. Every string. Yeah. That's 11 consecutive 400s, folks. Yeah. I don't know many people who have thrown 11 consecutive 400s in leagues. You have? Yeah. I did in Augusta. Was that the year you averaged 134? Something uh, like that? So 133, 134. I went yeah. uh, 12, 12 consecutive weeks. Wow. But he, he did it in... Of four consecutive days. <laughs> yes. His was much more impressive than mine. Um, for a guy that throws the ball that hard, mm-hmm. and to be able to do that in a week-long tournament that, you know, I'd say probably 90% of the people that listen to this podcast have bowled in, it's a grind. Yes. And yep. back then, they, they didn't carry a big bench like we do now. You nope. Know, there was five of them. Um, but Peter is number three. He is incredible, and I, I'm glad I got to see Peter in – Peter mode a couple times. Oh yeah, no, I, I mean, I I was in awe watching a lot of those guys when I first started. Just I sit back and be like, what 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 the hell am I doing here? Like, yeah, I, I, I'm I'm not good enough to be in this. Um, but you were, you were 130 that year. I was. I I don't know how, but I was, and that's okay. <laughs> a lot of adrenaline. Um, and I bowled every string. Um, so my number three is uh, a Canadian, uh, Canadia, eh? Um, Robbie Henderson. So I've got him at number three. Um, I saw, I've seen Robbie do some pretty impressive things on the lanes. Um, obviously, he hasn't bowled a lot of singles events because they don't do a lot of singles right. events up in up in Canada. And honestly, Robbie's one of those people that didn't bowl a lot. No. No. 
Um, he both, boy, did he both one week a year, though, huh? Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> um, so, and he did it for a long period of time. Mm-hmm. Um, he, uh, you know, look, and he's a nice guy, uh, I, I think. I mean, I got along with him, so... I, 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 he's, he's a very intense competitor. Oh, oh yeah. And it's funny because I, I didn't know him from hole in the ground my first couple worlds, but I was in awe. Yeah. And I'm watching him bowl a knockout in Bangor one year. And the hell is he's that? bowling and bowling. I think it was the Cats. And, and he gets done and he just walks back and he walks by me and I'm like, man, he's a machine. Yeah. He turns around and he actually goes, no, I am part machine because he has hearing aids. Yep. So he just joked and said, no, I really am part machine. Yep, part machine. And just walked off. So um, that that shot he had for 500 in the worlds that year in Moncton was incredible. Yeah, I forgot what he bowled. Deliver, it was 493 or 494 um, or something like that. I I was able to witness two 500s in the worlds. That's crazy. And that was Holbrook and Mark Gregory. You also got to witness Chip setting the state record and then it being and broken. then it broke 15 minutes later. <laughs> minutes later. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. saw that. Mm-hmm. So that your number three is Robbie. Yeah. Yeah, my number two is Robbie Henderson. <laughs> okay. I don't yeah. think we need to say anything. I don't think we need to say anything. Yeah, Robbie's my two. Okay. So who's your two? My two is a young gentleman by the name of Jeff Surratt. Ah. So I have Jeff. Nasty. I have Jeff at number two. Um, I believe we have the same number one. I do. Think. I, I think. I think we do. I think we do. But okay. I, I'm not done talking about okay. Jeff yet. So because you talked about Jeff, so now I'll talk about you Jeff. Talk about Jeff. Um. I don't like him. I think it's an ass. Matter of fact, where's my phone? I'm going to snap him right now so he's going to get a... Uh, uh... Son of a bitch! <laughs> my God! Guys, do not do a podcast hey, when you have a kidney stone. Hey, you know what's really wow. funny? One of the memories I can remember, um, one of the worlds in Bangor. Yep. I think it was in 06. Um. I had come up, I had to work, so I didn't get to bowl the knockout. But I, I show up as they're reading the first round matchups. Yeah. And they're like, so-and-so, one and two, and they go through. They get to five and six, or right around that big part where the door is. Yeah. And they go, uh, number five, Jeff Surratt, lane six, Sean Morrison. And the whole bowling alley just shifts <laughs> to go to a first yeah. round matchup that probably should have been a final. Yeah. So I am snapping this. As as we as we discussed, oh my God! Look out there! Oh, there's a deer, folks. There's literally a there's deer. literally a deer. Hey, buddy. Hey, 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 deer. Hey, hey, deer. Hey, deer. Wow! I hope he does not charge us. I hope he does. I, I hope she. he does. Uh, well, no, it's it's. Oh. Bye, buddy. Wow. So I am I am, Jesus. <laughs> my God. So, oh, shit, my, what a shit show this is. I can't wait to listen. Oh, look at him. Oh, my God. Oh. Um, so, anyway, um, this is, uh, shit. I gotta, re- I gotta redo this. So, so, I'm sending, I'm sending. Oh, son of a. All right, so. My number two on here is Jeff Surratt. Uh, Jeff, this is going out to you right now. I think you suck. I don't like you. I think you're an ass. I like your wife better. And Tinny is probably the best one. Maybe Tommy. I don't know. Definitely not you. But I can't wait to play golf with you in a couple weeks, but I'm looking forward to it. We'll see you soon. All right. So, and, and he said that. So, Jeff is number two. Jeff Surratt. Can we get to number one, or are you done? It's it. My number one <laughs> is Chris Sargent. Oh, I was going to do the reverb. So we're going to have to do this over. Okay. All right, folks. We have reached it. The number one. Whoa. Okay. Now you can. It, it's Chris Sargent. Is that your number one, too, Tim? Uh, Chris Sargent is my number one bowler since 1990. Um, and 200 straight. I, I mean, look, say what you want about the guy. I don't think he really cares one way or the other, whether you like him or not. Um, and I appreciate that. I appreciate mm-hmm. that about, oh, that's what you appreciate about him there, uh, Squirrely Dan? Easy Squirrely Dan. Easy Squirrely Dan. Um, say what you want about the guy. 
but he is the best bowler that I've seen in that time frame. I agree. Um, he is the most explosive bowler. He is multiple time world champion. He is multiple two hundreds, multiple time in, including champion. the world record, tied the world record two forty five. He has the world record for three strings. He is a single thing Grand Slam winner, I believe. I believe he has a knockout, a World's Tours, an ICBA, and yeah, that I think that's the Grand Slam. And the Easter, I guess. And he has an Easter, yeah. That that'd be the bowling Grand Slam, yeah. I would think. So I mean, I you that's know, look, big, I, how do you win the Easter when you throw that hard all the time? I I don't know. And he still he still can bowl. I mean, he's fifty. What is he? Fifty one, fifty one, fifty two, something like that. I know he's in his early fifties. He's well, old. He's a hall of famer. He, then. He's Next old. They have it. Well, if he gets nominated, I mean, it's again, it's he's one of those. Not, why? Why do you need to nominate Chris Sardin? Not a, not only that, but he's a polarizing figure. And God, are they is, going to accept him? This is going to turn into the fucking baseball hall of fame, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's fucking stupid. It pisses me off. Yeah. Tell me how you really feel, buddy. I I really feel like. Mark McGuire and Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens should be in the goddamn Hall of Fame. And so should Pete Rose and Shoeless Joe Jackson. I'm not disagreeing. I don't think sports writers should vote on the Hall of Fame. I think ex-players should vote mm-hmm. on the Hall of Fame only. Yep. yep. So I am, uh, I, I, again, um, if we're talking purely bowling, Chris Sargent is my number one. Um, I consider Chris a friend. I have for years. Um, I just went to Nick's Orleans one year with nobody to bowl with. I just came over to watch. He goes, you bowling with anybody? I go, no, I just can't watch. He goes, you got your stuff? I go, yeah. He goes, you're bowling now. Oh, well, there you go. He's like, we're on 15 and 16. You said okay. Yep. Um, you know, and, and again, I, I love watching good bowling. I do. I love watching good bowling. Um, that 800 he threw in Newport right next to me was fun to watch. Yeah. You know, I, I just, it's it's a lot of. You know, it's a lot of fun. And he's one of those guys that I, I, in the world, when I get a bowl against, that I'd love to say it brings out the best in me. Mm-hmm. Because I know I need to. You had that 170 that year when we bowled the 20 against yep. Chris. Yep. So, yep. all right. There's our, there's our top 25 of 1990, since 1990. If you disagree with us, you probably should. <laughs> God, I hope you disagree with us. I, I know we left out others. Hey, you know what? Alex, 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 the Hey, so just so you know, you can reach us at Ripping the Rack Podcast at gmail.com, on YouTube, on Facebook, Ripping the Rack Podcast, on Twitter, Ripping the Rack, on Twitter, tweet us, tweet at us. Mm hmm. Um, which we probably should do more. We we really should probably use yeah, Twitter yeah, more. Yeah, we gotta tweet more. Um, Twitter's what the young new hip kids are doing. Oh, now. those new those damn kids. Get off my lawn. Um, is that a nice deck? I do. I like this deck. I'm uh, just saying. I like by the way, Tim. Yes. Now that I, I assume we're into our back half or more of the podcast. Oh, I don't um, know. I haven't even looked at the time. Have uh. Yet. I have not. Um, I have not. Fucking amazing. I I've got to go buy it. Um, yes, I'm 49 years old and I still like to play video games. Get over it. Um, yeah, I mean we got about 20 minutes left or so, uh, or if we want to be exact, 22 minutes and six seconds. That, that game is I I think it's a good starting point for what they're gonna do with it. Nice. I mean, there's. The club selection and ratings are a little wonky, in my opinion. Yeah. Like, the golf club, that's uh, the parent company, yep. I guess. So their clubs are better than Ping's and TaylorMade's. <laughs> and and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a total simulation dude when it comes to sports games. Yeah. Like, I, I want the clubs I use in real life, which I can't because they don't make them anymore because I, I play Nikes. But... So I can't well, get those. You're a little Mr. Special. Actually, no, I found a... You've heard the story Martins. before, but I, I found my set of Nike Covert 2s still in the wrappers, smoke damaged at Martin, and I got the four through the four through pitching wedge for 189 bucks. That's a good deal. <laughs> yep. It's a really good deal. I still had to convince my wife, but 
You have golf clubs. Yeah, but I don't have Nike Covert 2s. <laughs> exactly. Um, oh, there's going to be one week coming up. Um, there might you, you will be solo again. And why for? I am on the golf trip in October, sir. I'm gone for a week. Oh. I'm in Atlantic City. Okay. I, I will go so or or we could Skype it. Oh, we, we could try that. We could try that. I could have some special guests. Yes. Yes. The, the drunk Airbnb of the golf trip. Yes. Uh, we had uh, hashtag Andrew's drinking again on Friday night. Oh, I saw that. I saw some snaps. Yeah. Margaritas? Yeah. Were you at Margaritas? Why, why I, do you continue to go to Margaritas? Uh, because it was right across from the hotel. What? They're smart. They put margaritas across from every hotel, man. Oh, yeah. They know the drunk businessmen that travel. Yep. I'm going to try to sit down again. You're going to. Man, I'm not going to lie. You know how I gave Tim shit earlier about it being cold? It is starting to cold. Yeah, I told you. Well, let's do this outside when I've got a nice, comfy office we could have done it in. No, no I don't want to do it oh. in your office, Tim. What kind of sick fantasy do you have? Oh my God, do you want to start doing that? You want no. to, let's get in. You want to start talking about some sick fantasies? No, this is not going to turn into Dr. Ruth Westheimer. No, it's the ooh, it's the lady, ooh, it's the <laughs> man, it's the old ladies man. Leon Phil. <laughs> That's a great movie. I'm sorry, I like stupid SNL comedy movies like Night at the Roxbury. Sure. Um. The ladies man. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the other ones. Coneheads. Coneheads is so good. Wayne's World. Wayne's World's a criminally underrated movie. I like Wayne's World. I'm just saying it's not, that's what pisses me off about the Oscars. Now I'm gonna rain it for a minute. I hate and, and I've come to appreciate it more. I, I think it's the the old personness that you get when you, you start to age where you actually want to see the best picture winner at the Oscars because it might actually be a really good movie that's worth watching and when you're a kid you hear that that's the best movie and you're like why the fuck is it gladiator the best movie and you well gladiator was the best picture but <laughs> it's like movies like that though like lord of the rings and star wars are never best picture right they make the most money like to me best picture would be the one everybody saw right right yes i'm taking a picture of the cat i know you are it's our ripping the rack podcast with cat. our kitties yeah hashtag send us your kitties oh that could get us in trouble <laughs> Oh, yes. Hashtag send us your kitties. Yep. That's ripping the rack on Twitter. Hashtag <laughs> send us your kitties. Or. 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 Facebook. Facebook at ripping the rack podcast. All right. I'm pretty sure everyone's turned this off. By now. Well, I don't, I don't know. This is kind of entertaining. Maybe a little. I, I feel like, I feel like I might have a. Um, for, for all my wrestling friends out look there. Look behind you. Oh, hey. <laughs> hey. But Mookie's scaling the. <laughs> Mookie's trying to figure out how to eat me. No, he's trying to figure out a way out. Look. Jesus. Oh, that, that might have been why. We just... No, he's literally crawling, climbing. He's dive bombed by a bird. Man, God. Damn, nature, you're scary. You know... Okay, get, getting into something else. You know what we really should have done, though? What? We should have taken this down to the fire pit. Maybe we'll have a fireside chat one night. <sighs> That'll be a, spe- a very, a very oh special, my God. intimate fireside chat ripping the rack podcast. Oh, my God, Yes. Uh-huh. I, I, I think, I think the cat's do... stuck. Yeah. <laughs> no, I literally think she's st- Mookie, what are you doing, buddy? Mookie. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I know your fingernail is stuck. <laughs> and so, oh, it is. No, Tim, it really is stuck. Oh, no, go. no, it isn't. <laughs> but no, his other one is. saved Tim's cat's life, I think. <laughs> there you go, Mook. Oh, my God. <sighs> this is high quality, high quality podcast right here. Okay. Um, back to another topic that some people, um, wrestling, Roman Reigns is a heel, and I love it. We're not talking wrestling. I just wanted to say that Roman Reigns turned heel, and I love it. I gotta admit, I, I, I didn't know if he would do that. I'm happy that they did it, because I think that that just brings out a whole new, It's um, gonna make it interesting, and it hasn't been for a yeah. while. Yeah, um, him coming out as a heel is probably the best move that they've done for a while. Yes, I, I gotta agree. It's good for him. Yeah. And it, it, it's good for the business. But it's really too bad there wasn't a crowd. Because that's, that's the, oh my God, could you imagine the crowd if he had done that? The, the pop would have been really, really big. Yeah. And and, and, and COVID has, has robbed some very deserving individuals of their moments. Yeah. Drew McIntyre at WrestleMania deserved the pop that he never got. Yep. Yep. 
Roman Reigns deserves that term, heel. <gasps> Collective gas. Oh, I thought I, you were looking into the house. I'm like, oh, what's Angie doing? She's getting ready to stab me. Is she? Yep. Is she out, have two, you seen her? Four, no, Is I haven't. Oh. No. I asked her if she'd come on. She said no. Yeah. Just like she's never drinking again. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah she's never drinking again. Ever. In the history of Evers. Oh, my God. Was she... Uh, she might have been a little... Uh, what's the word I want to use? Inebriated? Hammerfested is what we used to use in college. So you were hammerfested. Oh, she was definitely hammerfested. So... Um, what else is going on, Bry? Not a whole lot. Um, waiting to go on the golf trip. You doing a fantasy football draft tonight? Yeah. Oh, speaking of speaking of fantasy football draft, so Brian and I are gonna do a. Tim, this is not. I don't think this is gonna work. You don't think so? Why do we want to have a fantasy football league? There's just two of us, but we're gonna one person's gonna score 170 points a week. <laughs> right. I don't even think ESPN will let you draft a two person league. Well, Loki and Luna can be a team. Hey, you know what? When is the deadline? Thursday. Is I have Thursday no idea. the last the last day you can just start a league? Oh no, I'd ima- done... I no, I imagine it's next week because they don't start until the thirteenth. We should see people, please let us know. Is there interest in a ripping the rack ESPN fantasy football league? No. You don't want to do one? I haven't done I haven't done fantasy sports and Oh, Tim's just afraid he's gonna lose. <laughs> no, because oh, I wait, wait, didn't we have a fantasy football league the year uh, for our world's team one year? Who who won that? I have no idea because I don't remember. I won. That. I was kicked off the team. Remember? That wasn't the year you were kicked off the team. No, but they kicked me off, so I don't remember a lot of things. Mm. That's how. That's how it rolls. Mm. You're old. I I am old. Um. I have been listening, and I forgot now where I was going with that. You are old. No, I had found something. I went down a rabbit hole on I YouTube. Would... Rabbit hole. Oh yeah! Oh my god! Yeah. Corn, that's hilarious. Yeah. No, I went down. A, I went down a music rabbit hole the other night. Um, this was last week. Um, I talk to me about this. We won't play golf. And I can't remember now. I I just I Wasn't can't. Aaron Lewis rabbit hole, you said. Well, he was one. I mean, yeah. it just went. It, it just kept going. Oh, cover song. It was cover oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I ended up going down Chris Cornell's. Yeah. Um, no, that was a while ago. That was when you were by yourself. For the I know. When I, had the, when I thought I had the plague. Well, okay. Um, just, he's old. He can't remember. I'm not that old. I am cold, though, and I'm hungry. Because it's 6.30 and I haven't eaten yet. Well, that's on you. I know. We should order pizza and have the Domino's guy just oh, deliver it to us. Oh, man. While we're doing the podcast. I wonder, I wonder if Angie's cooking. Mm, maybe. Or she's maybe watching so. TV. Did she? Did she enjoy? Did you enjoy the meatloaf? The meatloaf was amazing. Yeah, it was, it was good. I, I love meatloaf. I had I had a bunch of helpings of it. Mm. I had a couple sandwiches. Nothing better than meatloaf today. Well, I could think some things better, but well, that's true. But in, in terms of meatloaf and sandwiches, there's nothing better that, than a meatloaf that, sandwich. That, well, that is true. That you, you are not Your wrong. Bruins look fucking great, don't they? Oh my god, they are phenomenal. Phenomenally terrible. And they play tonight, and tonight will be the last night of the season for them. Yep, it sure will. Yep, and I think this will be the last game Halak plays for them. Well, he hasn't played yet. <laughs> huh? Oh, uh, that's true. I I think uh, Rask retires. Um, yes. I think I think Halak does not come back. I think what you see is Vlader and uh, Swayman. I think Swayman has an outside shot at so it. So they they need to go sign a goalie, is what you're saying. No, Glader led the AHL in save percentage. I understand, but he's young. He's 22, 23. Okay. So, young AHL is a good player? I'm telling you. I think he's your goalie next year. I don't know that much about hockey. I, I know it's fun to watch. but I don't know strategies of hockey. Really? No. You, you put the puck in the net. Well, I, I know that. But... And then you beat the shit out of the other team. Yeah, but, but what happened to Cloud Julian? He didn't like to put the puck in the net. His, his well, offense was, he said his offense was defense. Right. And that's why he's no longer the coach of the Bruins. <laughs> now he's the coach of Montreal. Did he go back to... Yeah, he went to, to Montreal. He went back to that dumpster fire of a toilet. Yes, Angela, you heard me correctly. El Canadian dumpster fire toilet seat. Is there shitting on the Habs segment, folks? Yay! 
Yay, let's shit on the Habs. And the Leafs. Let's shit on the Leafs, too. Well, that's we okay. We had a very spirited hockey conversation that night in Moncton. We did. When we were at uh, Saint, no, um, Sports Arena? No, it was St. Louis. St. Louis? Yeah. No, it was the other one. It was um, Sports Rock. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, Sports Rock. Yeah. Good food. Really good food. Yeah, that was good. Moncton has a lot of good places. Too. Yeah. Jungle Gyms. I like Mon- Sports Rock. I like St. Moncton. Louis. I do, too. And it's got a casino. It does. I like a good casino. I don't go enough. I think that... I want to well, learn how to play craps. I do, too. Like, I don't know how to... I don't really know how to play roulette other than just, I'm going to put money here. No, roulette's easy to learn. Um, I, I I enjoy playing roulette, but it's it's easy to learn. You'll have to show I, me. I want to play craps, because it, like, it looks like a lot of fun. People have a shit ton of fun at those games. Yeah. Um, I watch some... I, I watch some YouTube stuff on how to play... Um, it's not as difficult as I thought it was, um, especially if you're not doing the, you know, the the hard way bets or hard way or whatever they are, mm-hmm. hard bet. I don't know. I, I, the I term don't, hard is used. About it. <laughs> <So> hard. <laughs> like my deck, it's hard. Yes, deck made of hardwood. Yes. Synthetic, synthetic hardwood. That's not synthetic. Why didn't you go with the synthetic? Because I wasn't gonna pay double what it costs for this. But it lasts forever. I'm not gonna live forever. I don't know that. You could You're be... gonna live forever. No, you, you could be a Highlander. You're gonna learn how to smile. Smile. You could Sorry. be a Highlander. I could be. You could be immortal. Just you could, like, once you find out, you can walk around with them big like trench coats on, with your knife and your big sword underneath, walk around cutting people's heads off, taking their like power. You know what hurts right this second? What? Oh my god. <laughs> Son of a Speaking of taking somebody's power, the my god, stone is god, you know... two again. That oxy did not work at all. I told you you could done. Take two more. Son of a... Maybe I should start drinking. No. no. You don't think so? No. I don't want to do that. I'd be a good drunk. I'm a fun drunk. You are, but you're... An... Did mean... we did we did say the story of the... Yes. Okay. And, and I mean this in the nicest way possible, Tim. You're a fucking lot when you're drunk. <laughs> you are a lot when what, you're drunk. What, what are you saying? You're very, very high maintenance when you're drunk. I'm not high maintenance when I'm drunk. Yes, you are. I, I would I would tend to disagree. I put laundry baskets. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't a laundry basket. That was the um oh, the push card, the luggage, the luggage card. card. Oh. That was. Um so we don't even need to talk baseball anymore. I mean the trade deadlines today and the Red Sox have unloaded everyone. Yep, which is, you know what, I'm happy for Mitch Moreland. Um, I yeah. think he, I think he oh went. Oh my god, he gets to go to the Padres. He, he go well, number one, you get great weather. <laughs> you get to play with Fernando Tatis you get, Jr. You get day. to play with Fernando Tatis Jr. And you have Don Orsillo calling your games. Yeah. San Diego is based on Tatis right now. Oh, it is, it is now. They're playing great ball, and uh, they made a shit ton of moves. They are so young. They made a lot of moves. Um, did you, did they get Clevenger? Um, yep. Um, yeah, they did. Well, they kept nine out of their ten top prospects. I don't understand how they... I don't know. Um, I'm wondering if he follows all the other kids with ball players and goes to Toronto when his contract is up. Possibly. Can you imagine him hitting in front of Vlad Jr.? Oh, my God. You have, uh, uh, Kevin Pilar got traded. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Sorry, D-Nice. <laughs> Um, so many localized Kevin Pillar games. No, no, no. He's gone to Colorado. Um, who else got traded? I didn't see. I didn't see who else got traded. So uh, Cubs made a bunch of moves. They picked up a reliever from the Sox. Um, oh, didn't Workman get traded? Yeah, Workman got Workman's traded. Workman's gone. He was gone a couple days ago, though. Yeah. Oh, uh, here we go. I guess oh, your CBS Sports app here has uh, ranking the deadlines. Let's, oh, here we let's go. Let's see who baseball, who CBS Sports. Says they're the winners from the trade deadline. Better be the Padres. Oh, they, they by players. So they say the best pickup um, was Taylor Trammell, uh, an outfielder for the Mariners, acquired from the Padres. Wow. For Austin Nola and um, right-handed pitchers Austin Adams and Dan Altavia. Okay. Uh, number two, actually, is a Red Sox. Connor Seabold. 
acquired from the Phillies for Brandon Workman. They say he's the number two best pickup. Wow. And we'll do the top three. Um, they say Cleveland, Gabriel Aris, the pickup there acquired from the Padres in that big deal. Um, yeah, the Padres are the overall winners here. I mean, they, they're be. making the right moves. The Red Sox have a couple guys. They have three guys in here, actually, but they're not going to pan out for the Sox this year. They're, they're future builders. Oh, no, I gave, I gave up on the Sox this year. Hey, do you think uh, J.D. opts out at the end of the year? God, I hope so. You really don't want J.D. Martinez nope. in your lineup anymore? Nope. Are, are you getting no, I, I, kick in finally? No, no, I'm just I'm ready for them to just go full rebuild mode. I'm okay with it. I, I'll take a year or two of really bad team. If they could simply rebuild. Well, the number one thing we got to do to rebuild is tell Dustin Pedroia to fucking retire. That's coming. I think. I don't think he comes back. I think he retires. I think um, they force him to retire. Yep. And they make him a bench coach. Yep. I don't. I, I legitimately think the man will go insane if he can't be at a baseball field. Um, I was on. Um, I'm on Twitter just trying to see. See if they had anything. Uh, on here. Christian Vasquez is taking grounders at third. Oh, that's not a good sign. He was supposed to get dealt today. Yeah, and he didn't. Do you know where they wanted to send him? Mets. No. Tampa Bay. Let's oh, yeah, because they yeah, send him in the division. That makes sense. Um, so he can hit off a 60 times a year and probably put 20 of those in the bleachers. Uh, let's see. Mets got Todd Frazier. The veteran. The Red Sox are keeping Christian Vasquez and Nathan Evaldi. Well, that's because Evaldi is hurt all the time. Yep. They threw all of his good pitches in that 18 inning game. Yep. Where are we at for time, Tim? Uh, we've got, uh, I'm sorry, we got about four minutes left. All right. So uh, we can talk. Um, let's, let's, let's talk, uh, let's talk politics. Oh, no. no. <laughs> No, really, no. I, I, are you hiding from Biden, or are no, you uh, are you pumped of, for Trump? I'm sick of everything. My my kids' favorite shows. His bedtime routine is: we go out and play until seven. Seven o'clock, we come in. Jammies, Wheel of Fortune, Jeopardy, Story Time, bed. My kid is a 65 year old man already. <laughs> he, his favorite two shows, aside from Mickey Mouse, because that holy shit, that's a cult. <laughs> He's indoctrinated already. Oh yeah. Um, but his Wheel of Fortune in Jeopardy. Wow. Loves him. We'll sit there and you know that's how it, letters. I'd like to buy an A. Hey. Wow. Yeah. So that's good. Mm. That's good. Um. Yeah. You know I'm not I, I'm not going to talk politics because I just everything pisses but, me off right but now. Getting back into why that. Yeah. Matters. Because every commercial in between is. Fucking Sarah Gideon and Susan, Susan Collins. Collins and that fucking money judges up for everything. I hate that fucking song so much. <laughs> Boy, I haven't I haven't you seen you drop the f bomb so much in this podcast. Yeah, I'm just wow. Like, it's it's been a stressful few days. I get that. I get that. Um, so we're at the uh, we're at the point in time where we have uh, about the final sixty seconds. So I'll give you the first thirty if you want to. Speak to whatever you would like to speak to in about 10 seconds. You can go, and I'm not going to do a countdown because that would just be weird. All right, so I am looking forward to fall, one of my favorite seasons. Football's coming back, hopefully, it'll be nice to watch some football. Um, I am absolutely for the college players not playing, I'll get into that off air if anybody wants to know about that. Um, but I am for their, them not playing, and I'm excited for my golf trip in about six weeks. Nice. So uh, let's see, what do I got? I got uh, we got Labor Day coming up, three day yep. weekend here in the states. Um, looking forward to a little break. Um, league start up after that. Actually, looking forward to leagues. I know I don't know how long it's been since I've said something like that. I know it's kind of odd. Not sure how I feel about that. Uh, we've got state tournaments starting up soon. We're going to Thursday night again, right? Yes. Perfect. Yeah. I don't wait. Are we? So. Okay. Same team I as last so. year? Yeah. Okay. You, Jason, Eric, and Gary. All right. That was fun. Um, I'm not looking forward to uh, this kidney stone because it's going on four days and it's not moving and it's pissing me off, which 
ultimately means God, I hope not. Um, because it's small. It's a small one, they said. might not be bowling when we start. I don't know. So, anyway, uh, guys, thank you for listening. Again, please reach out to us. Tell us what you want to hear. Tell us what you want to hear. Tell us what you don't want to hear. Tell us what you want, what you really, really want. Tell me what you want, what you really, really want. That really sounded like I was drunk right there. It did. Uh, so, all right. Be kind, be well. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. We appreciate it. Peace.